Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Harmony Nice and today I'm going to be continuing my Enchanted Endeavours episodes. Welcome back to these. I've been really, really excited to kind of work a little bit harder on these now that I actually have the time to. So if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see coming from these episodes, I would like to more frequently upload them because I just haven't had the time to nurture it like I wanted to the Enchanted Endeavours series. I do have quite a few planned, but I would always like to know what you guys would like to see coming from this series. I hope you're all doing really, really well. I'm thinking about you all still so much. So I just hope you're all keeping safe and doing well, being mentally well and everything like that. And I'm just sending you my love and my light and everything and know that I'm thinking about every single one of you. So for those of you who have not been here before, my name is Harmony Nice. I am a cottage wicker and this is Enchanted Endeavours, which is a series all about Wicca, the Wicca faith in general. And then I also have an Enchanted Spellwork series, which is more of the practical side of Wicca and witchcraft, where I do things like spells, potions, rituals, and everything like that. So I'll link them both down below and you can check them out there. So in today's video, we were going to be talking about art magic and all about art magic and how to do it. Art magic is something that I've used as a part of my cottage Wicca path for about a year and a half now and I really really love it. I think it's something that is extremely incredible. I've used elements of our magic throughout my whole entire witchcraft and wicca journey since I was like 14. So I feel like I know quite a lot about the subject despite it never being like the main part of my path. But now I've kind of been into cottage wicca and had that as my path for a while now. It's definitely become a very very important element to my cottage wicca path. I'm loving like expressing my creativity and also making it into something that is a part of my faith. So today's video is actually going to be a two-part series. So today is going to be a theory video all about an introduction to art magic, what it's all about, how to do it and what it is in general and then I'm going to be doing a part two where I'm going to be doing a magical art session for you guys. So kind of like a paint with me but with the added like how, what I do in order to create my art and magic in general because there are so many different ways and forms that you can do art magic. I thought it would be interesting to kind of give you an example on how I personally do my art magic and how I create and everything like that. So I hope that's kind of a fun thing to do. It probably won't be the next video to go up, but it will be up within the next week. So before I start this video, I do have to say a disclaimer before I start any of my Enchanted Endeavours videos. So firstly, this video is for beginners. I make my Enchanted Endeavours videos for beginners or people that may just be interested in a subject in general. I make them because I want to be the help that I needed when I first started out in my Wicca and witchcraft journey. I hope that's okay. I just always have to put a disclaimer out there before the start that just to be aware that we like to educate and not belittle on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy this video all about art magic and let's just jump right into it. So starting with the complete basics, what is art magic? So art magic is, and you may have already guessed, art with intention. So typically within our spell work, within witchcraft and things like that, we work with an intent alongside mediums, our five senses and the five earth elements in order to create effective change. So the same applies with art magic. We are working with an intent our five senses and the mediums that happen to be some form of art and the earth mediums and creating magical links in order to make effective change. As a Wiccan or a witch, you can literally find any tool in earth or any passion or anything that you may feel gives you strength and power and use that to help create our magic. So art magic can be something that can be extremely powerful. And I think a lot of people kind of disregard art magic in general and kind of put it down to being like a lower form of magic, which it is not at all, it is so extremely powerful. And it is also really, really effective as you are literally devoting your mind, your imaginations, your souls to something for a long period of time. And you're using your energy and your passion and this can lead to having extremely effective results. I think many people think of spell work as sitting in a dark room surrounded by candles and herbs and things like that. And don't really ever branch out and see that you can use different mediums and different passions and things like that in order to help create your magic. For me, when I'm doing art, much like when I'm casting a spell, I'm literally like letting my mind take over. 
My uh, form of artwork is fine art, it's painting. And when I feel like I'm doing it, I feel like I'm like devoting my mind and my body to it. It almost feels like a guided meditation because I always like to set the mood and set the scene and anything like that. Even before I actually started to incorporate magical elements to my art magic, but your whole mind and body is focused on it and you have a massive passion for what you're doing, which can really, really help get your intent and energy across in order to just focus that energy. And art is actually considered magic in itself. A lot of people have said this throughout history. Art is so magical because you are literally like putting your feelings, your emotions, like your energy into something that is going to affect other people. So we can use that in order to place or move our energy and our magic in order to help change or benefit or something like that to ourselves or other people. So artwork itself can be considered like doing a spell if you make it like that. Artwork with added intention and other magical elements added to help direct and focus our energy and place our intent that you wish to make to make that effective change. So art even without the added correspondences can be so incredibly powerful. You can add to it and make it into like a more formal sort of spell but it can have incredible impact on people anyway. It kind of just depends on how you want to do it. It's also very very important that there is still no rules to art. I think that's such an important thing to say. You do not have to do like a bunch of stuff to make it magic. You can just use intent, you can just use like different elements of what suits you and your personal style of artwork. But there is things that you can do in order to make it into a more of an intention set practice. So what forms does art magic come in? Art magic can basically come in any creative passion endeavor. So this could be from fine art to cooking, which can be considered as completely different form of uh, witchery. Textile art, it can be music, photography, and lots of these things can also be considered as different types of witchery too, but they all kind of come under that artistic spe spectrum. And depending on what form of artwork you are doing, it depends on how you can think about how you can add to your artwork. Add magical elements to it in order to determine how you can help focus that energy and that intent, how you're going to use your art in order to make your magic. Magical correspondence to add to your artwork. So adding magic to your art is really probably the most simple, effective first step to diving into art magic in general. Elements of witchcraft and things you have learned prior in your witch journeys are studied and can be added to your art. So the way that you can do this is by adding adding magical correspondences to your artwork. So if you guys aren't aware on what correspondences or magical correspondences are, so Wicca and witchcraft practitioners use something that are known as a correspondence, which are basically used to create magical links in order to use within their spell work. They are magical properties that you can add to your spell, spell work through the elements that you are using. These can help link the materials that you are using within your art form and the natural earth elements to help add these correspondences and help create magical magical links. So for an example, if you are making a potion, you would typically consider the types of herbs that you are going to be using, maybe specific colours of candles that you're going to be using to help with your intention and your energy of the spell and what you do in order to kind of set a specific like mood or tone or energy in order to really get your intention and your focus out there to make that effective change. And it's exactly the same for art magic. Symbols, colors, and scents are really key in art magic. And they are really key components to pretty much any spell that you do anyway, because they kind of help stimulate the senses of the practitioner in order to set a specific tone and help the energy of the practitioner to make that effective change. As well as adding specific tools that you can use too. There's also art magic that you may have already been doing without even realizing it that you can take inspiration from while doing this, like creating talismans, like baking breads with enchantments on them, like creating your own magical tools and drawing sigils, magical correspondences and methods that you can put into your art magic. Now you do not have to do all of these, but these are things that you can consider while trying to put a little bit more of an intention set practice into whatever your art form is. So some magical correspondences and correspondent links and elements of magic that you can consider while helping create your 
art magic and getting into art magic. So firstly, colour. So colour is obviously extremely important when it comes to artwork anyway, and also magic in general. The study of colour should be heavily considered in your Wicca or witchcraft path anyway, because no matter kind of what spell that you may be doing or something like that, colour it seems to be a big form that definitely comes up quite a lot. You know, you're thinking about what kind of colour candles you may be using and how they can make an effect within your magic in general to help focus your intent a little bit more. But with art magic, it's also extremely important to study colour magic too. You don't have to change the colours of your artwork or anything like that if you have a specific uh, style or anything like that, but it is something you can definitely consider, especially if you experiment with colour. I know I like to experiment with colour a little bit more, but even if you're a person that just paints in neutral tones, there is ways that if you are doing a love spell or something like that, you can add maybe some warmer tones to your artwork. Me, I know that's what I do specifically. I like to kind of add little speckles of colour or something like that, especially if it has that specific intention behind it. If it's one for joy and prosperity, think about adding some more like warmer yellow tones. If you're knitting, maybe think about what colours that you can use for your wool. There are loads of great sources online about colours and their magical correspondences. So there's also some in my book as well. I'm not saying like go out and buy my book because there's lots of free online sources there too. But yeah, again, like if you're a photographer, you can think about what you're using in your photography, or what you're shooting in, or even the colour of your tools that you are using, that is something that you can correspond with your art magic. So scents like incenses, candles and oils. So scents and smells, like any other magical practice that you may be doing, are important too. So like in magic in general, you may be burning a specific incense that is relevant to the sabbat that is coming up. You know, winter, you you try like to like burn warm scents and scents that are associated with warmth. And this can apply for art magic too. I know people that when they are making clothing, as that is like their form of art magic, they like to put a specific smell in the dye that they are using for their clothing. Not only that, but when you're painting, you can consider scents and things like that while you are actually doing the actual practice of your art magic. You can burn specific incenses. If you're doing a money spell, you might be using like cinnamon or pecu or I tint a candle with a relevant scent that could be the specific colour of the and have a magical correspondent to the intent of your spell. This is all still relevant in searching and um, studying like herbs and scents and things like that too. It's still important that you can see the relevancy and see how they can connect and make a link together. I've seen some online that some people put like essential oils in paints and things like that. I know my boyfriend when he plays at live shows he always says that he is casting spells with his magic and he likes to burn specific incenses on stage in order to put a specific intent and mood out to the audience too. So you can put it like that as well. Tools. So like ones to most witches, you can have other tools that aren't like the everyday most seen witchcraft items like a wand. A magical item is something that we can use to direct energy or evoke and invoke energy. For example, I have a special uh, kitchen wand, I call it, which is a kitchen spoon, which I use for my kitchen magic. It has specific engravings to me that I like to use to focus my energy within my kitchen witchery. I have enchanted and blessed. This isn't an example of art as I don't really think this can be considered as art, but it probably it probably can be, like anything can probably be considered as art if you want to. But within green witchery, like some green witches have um, specific gardening tools that they use as their wand to direct focus that energy. No matter what your art is, there can be a tool that you can bless or enchant and make into your one of your so-called wands and have as a part of your altar if it's important to you. An instrument or camera or whatever or something something that can lead you and be that thing that directs that energy and that focus into your passion. It's kind of up to you what this may be. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be the guitar. It could be a pick. It doesn't have to be the camera. It could be something that you use. We'll be talking about altars and the art witch path at the end of the video. So if you have any questions about that, just hold off for a second because I might um, answer them at the end of the video about how you can store your tools specifically and things like that and what to do with your art magic and things like that. That is all coming up. Again, your altar can be whatever you want it to be. It just has to be a place where you come and be basically with your path or store your magical tools at and everything like that. It is a magical place for a Wiccan to be and it can be as small or as large as you want. Another magical correspondent you can consider is plants, herbs, flowers, and spices. So again, this is kind of related to scents, but also completely different too. So starting off with something that I hear quite frequently is when people want to use a specific flower in order to help their intent of the spell, they may even actually like visually paint that flower. They may incorporate that flower some way into their artwork. Some people actually like to use the flower and like 
include it in like a collage or something like that. Some people like to use flowers to create watercolour paints. Like if you were cooking you would use spices and herbs that have relevant properties to whatever spell you would like to put across if you went to kitchen witchery. Some people make dye out of specific flowers and spices too. Some people may knit a sunflower into a cardigan if they want to do like a prosperity spell um, on one of their pieces of work. Some people might like to cross stitch a birch tree for new beginnings. It's really quite easy to make that magical link between the two. There is loads of different stuff of ways you can incorporate them into your artwork. So now methods. To continue on from earlier, there are things that you may already know within your witchcraft journey to add to your artwork in order to help create those magical links and help create your art magic. So I've seen this so much everywhere and I personally do this too, but drawing a specific like sigil on a canvas before you paint on it or on a back of a piece of artwork, I do that as well. This one has it on there as well. I always do that on the back on paint. Some people just like to draw a little thing on the canvas. Some people like to actually write out whole spells on canvases before painting over it. Some people do like uh, number magic and maybe write a certain amount of lines per paragraph in order to help kind of create a spell even within their writing. They can have certain word formations that can also be considered as a spell too that can be used in poetry. You can sculpt magical symbols into sculptures. You can make actual magical tools. You can say specific words um, that you may say in like a normal spell. You can have mantras while you paint. I sometimes like to repeat and say words throughout my um, artwork if I'm doing like a proper sit down magical art session like I do in my kitchen witchery that you may have seen in my previous Enchanted Spellwork series. You may even write a magical formation of chords that you can incorporate into your music. You may place a sigil on a guitar, you may place a sigil on a certain instrument that you have, or any other magical symbols. Some people like to charge their water with crystals or use moon water or special like river water for their paint water. There's just so many magical methods that you may already know that you can incorporate into your art magic in general. Environment. So environment is always something important to consider when you are doing magic anyway. As you may know, if you are not new to witchcraft, even if you are new to witchcraft, that's okay, there's no worries. But usually when you're doing spell work, you kind of like to set a certain mood or um, set up your environment in a certain way or be in a certain environment when you are doing your magic. And the same can be considered while you're doing your art magic. There are specific correspondences that you can think about while setting up your room that can link to whatever intent that you may have for your spell. Cleansing the area is obviously important you can cleanse it with a relevant incense, you can cleanse it with sage, you may already like the energy of the room and just want to enhance it a little bit which you can do by um, lighting candles, having relevant smells and coloured candles, placing crystals um, near your easel or placing crystals around you that have a relevant properties behind them. You can place a relevant music on like if I am wanting to really like pour my emotions out and do maybe a healing spell or something like that I will put on some relevant music that really makes me like feel that and really makes me feel like I can like <gasps> like you know let go. Sigur Ross is an incredible one that I've been using recently and it's just like oh it's so powerful it's so amazing. But on like meditation music. I really like sun meditation music if I am doing a more happy like joyful spell. Like I referred to earlier with my boyfriend that puts like incense when he plays his shows. That is also something that you can do in order to like help really like create that energy. Just thinking about your environment no matter what your creative for art form may be. Now this is like a kind of random one but the placement of your artwork. So now this is more relevant for people that do fine art and things like that. So people like me who may be doing fine art. Something to consider while doing your artwork is also the placement on things and this can also link to your environment too. So firstly the placement and form of actually how you are doing your artwork. So for an example sometimes I like to sit at specific angles in my room facing a direct element that maybe relates to the intent of my spell. So I might sit at the fire element angle or the earth or the air element, element angle depending on what I would kind of like to do. Or I'd like to be away from the sun or near to the sun or nearer to the moon or something like that. And then after you have it finished your artwork thing you can have special books. Um, some people who have art witchery as their like main form have like an art book as they're like one of their book of shadows. Do you know what I mean? They have it as like an element one. I have a special book that but I is more just like my sketch pad. But when it's like a proper intention set spell, like I do make sure to keep them safe within the art book. Um, you can also put your artwork up. Some people believe that all of your artwork should be put up if you've done it. I think it's more kind of relevant to what you want to do or what you, how you would. So ones that I really really like, I put up. I charge them with spells or smoke. 
smoke. I like to display them in proper places, like you kind of would with kitchen witchery, like, you know, you like to share it with your friends if it's like a joy and prosperity spell. If it's like a family joyous, you may want to put it in your living room, but everybody has a different take on this. So if you are gifting this to somebody, you can suggest, but people tend to have their own kind of ideas on where they would like to place artwork and things like that. And I think you kind of have to leave it up to the people who are going to live with it, their own take on what you were gifting them is very as important as what you have done as well. And obviously you can store your tools and everything like that. I have like a little tub at the top of there for all my art stuff. And same with like your sketchbooks, you keep them in specific like relevant spaces too and charge them. You look for your artwork on a regular basis to see where you need to improve. And the last question is, is an art witch a part? Yes, it is. I wouldn't consider myself obviously as an art witch. I am a cottage Wiccan, but because I do practice art witchery, but it is a path it can be an own set path. There is a Wicca and witchcraft art path. You're focusing your whole dedication for your practice on your path to being an art witch and practicing art witchery. Art witches can specifically have items where you can store your art tools or your art magic at your altar. You can have grimoires and book of shadows that can be mainly focused on art magic and art base. So you take notes as you normally would and research things as you normally would and, re and research into like color, con color correspondences and different forms of colour, what you would like to improve next time, how art sessions went, like you would a normal book of shadows but kind of relating it more to your art witchery. I, in my regular book of shadows, do this anyway if I'm practicing an art spell. I like to kind of write down Sorry. So in my book of shadows, I do this anyway for my typical kind of like art magic sessions and I like to kind of note down what I have done, how I went, how I can prove the next time. But this is like amongst all the other kind of magic that I like to incorporate into my cottage wicker journey. But I do have a certain sketchbook that is just for my kind of art work and art magic as well. And I use the paper from it from that as well. Some art witches may have a book of shadows and then also have a sketchbook book that can be considered as like a sacred book too that they just do their artwork in and everything like that. You can incorporate art magic into every single day life too so not every single art session has to be like a massive um, intention set practice. You could do like small sketches and pieces and do larger pieces if you want that you do not have want to have that just to practice your magic. You can even just have like smaller ones where you just want to set an intention for the piece and not kind of consider anything else and just let your mind flow. It's really up to you and what you do with your art. It's not up to anybody else. You don't, you can be an art witch and um, only consider a few like co correspondences. You can be an art witch and just set intentions for your artwork. You can practice sigil drawings on an every single day thing. You can do like little sketches every day to kind of just incorporate it in it to your magical routine. You can literally just set like a small intention for a drawing a day if you wish and then that kind of maybe will help you um, incorporate a bit more into your wicker practice in general by just doing a little sketch a day with an intention behind it. And then for the bigger rituals as an art witch or somebody that practice art witchery can be absolutely whatever you want them to be. So you can like set up something a little bit bigger like you will probably see within my next video how I do my magical art sessions when I like really want to do a magical art session and put an intention behind it. Also as an art witch, you can practice other forms of magic too. This is the same for every single witchcraft path and wicker path as well, is that I feel like people kind of like pick something and they think, right, that's it. Like that's all I can do within my path. But you can experiment and explore like any single type of witchery that you want. You are still a witch, you are still a Wiccan. It can be the main thing in your path and then you can add little elements of anything anyway. You can still practice witchcraft in any other form that you wish. I think people, the reason people pick like uh, to have a name or something like that is because it kind of provides them with a certain guidance um, of the magic that they are interested in and also kind of helps you differentiate um, and maybe like have something that you're mainly interested in and then just explore other elements around that but you can have something you really like to put your main focus on. And for art magic too you can plan like bigger rituals like I said you will see in my next video how I kind of do like a more intention set practice of like a magical proper magical art session as well as doing like little things on the every single day. You don't have to change your whole entire view on art um, in order to incorporate art magic into your path. You can set up a whole ritual dedicated to a very powerful
or painting, you can set up a live show and showcase your artwork there. If you play music, you may want to dedicate a ritual to writing a song or setting up a massive live show. Or if you stitch, you could in, you could stitch sigils into clothing. You can enchant the cotton or wool that you're using to make your clothing with. Anything that you have a passion for, you can create a large ritual with a strong intention behind it. A more important um, change that you would like to make. And the bigger things that you would may want to use your magic for. Art witchery can also be incorporated into your path too. You do not have to practice it as a standalone path. There's also art related deities. There is basically deities for every single thing throughout all the different kind of sets of deities and related back to different cultures. So no matter who you are, who you would like to follow, if you would like to follow deities, there is art set deities too. So you can have a look at that. Because I specifically usually follow Celtic deities, I specifically like to call upon Brigid or Gwydion when I'm doing art rituals. It's also important to remember that if you are studying the kind of art magic path, you can study or follow wherever you want. You can still study nature. Like you said, it's still like a witchcraft and wicker path to it, even though like it incorporates something that uh, is like a um, its own sort of medium and its own thing. Um, you can still call upon other deities wish to follow. You can study other elements of witchcraft in general, incorporate other parts of witchcraft into your path. And it's all still relevant, like the study into nature and and like I said earlier, the correspondences. The understanding of nature and witchcraft in general can help inspire your artwork and help you discover new elements to add to your artwork and gain new inspiration from places that can help you with your art magic in order to make it more powerful and effective for you. There are no rules, but there is understandings that you can have on how you can relate um, your artwork to nature and in order to help your magic in general. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it kind of feels like a bit of a muddily video. I It's so hard to kind of put something that you practice a lot into like actual words and cover as much as you kind of feel necessary about it. So I, I hope it was good. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Self-doubt as always, Harmony. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video all about art witchcraft and art magic in general i love you guys so much i really really hope you enjoyed i will see you in my next video and the part two which will be an enchanted which will be an enchanted spell work episode sorry will be coming up within the next week or so so i really really hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys love this video and i will see you in my next video bye guys uh, art magic Woo.